What's up, what's up? So today, we're going to talk about a very important subject, and that is the subject of making money. Yes, that is right. Making money. say that in the 21st century world, in the United States, in a first world country, there's absolutely no excuse for an able-bodied male to be broke. I'll repeat that. In the 21st century, in the United States, there's absolutely no excuse for an able-bodied man to be broke. There are so many ways to make money out here. Money is everywhere. You know, we are taught to have this mindset that money is rare, money is hard to get, that we're supposed to trade our time and our energy for money, that money is scarce. We don't believe in a scarcity mindset around here. We believe in abundance. So I'm going to teach you guys how you can become financially secure by increasing your income streams, by creating different streams of revenue, bringing more money into your home, into your pocket, so you can live the life that you want. Let's get right into it. Way number one, my least favorite way, because it is essentially trading your time for money, which, as I said before, I'm against, but this is one of the quickest ways to increase the amount of money in your pocket and also increase the amount of capital that you have to invest in some of the other ways that I'm going to teach you later on in the video. So this way... Way number one of increasing revenue is to work more. I repeat, it is to work more. <coughs> the average person only works 40 hours a week in the United States. The average income of a male in the United States is thirty to $40,000 a year. There is 168 hours in a week. If you are only working 40 hours a week and you're comfortable with that, bro, that's, that's too little. 40 hours a week, that is some loser stuff. You're a loser. That's right. So if you're only working 40 hours a week, that means you have 128 more hours in the week in which you can be making money. That is a bank. That is a gold mine right there of cash just waiting to be put into your pocket. So let's break this down. Income. This is how you know most places calculate income. Most uh, census, accounting uh, agencies, all of them, how they calculate income. If you're an hourly employee, as I said, the average yearly income is $40,000 a year. So that would equate to about $20 an hour. And I'll show you how this equation works. If you're an hourly employee, you take your hourly rate and you multiply it times 2,000. 2,000 would be the number of hours the average person works in a year. Mind you, there's 40 hours a week. Average person works about 50 weeks out of the year, given about two weeks of vacation. So 40 times 50 equals 2,000. So you take your hourly wage, which would be $20 an hour. You multiply that times 2,000, and that gives you the 40K number. Right? 40K is some brokey stuff. 
we can do brokey stuff, right? 40K, it's not going to get it done. So simply by doubling the amount of time that you work, instead of working 40 hours a week, you work 80 hours a week, you can make six figures, even if you only make 20 bucks an hour. I'm going to show you how that works. So you guys remember that equation that I was telling you about. Now, let me show you how to make it work in your favor. The cool thing about being an hourly employee is that any time over 40 hours a week, by law, they have to pay you time and a half. So 1.5 times your hourly rate. So if you're working 80 hours a week, come on, you guys are so bright. Let's do the math. So if you're working 80 hours a week and 40 of those hours, you're going to get at your regular pay rate. And then the next 40 hours, you're going to get at your pay rate times 1.5. So you are more than doubling your income with this beautiful formula that works out in your favor. So let's just say you take that average guy, that average guy who is a... Uh, You're a loser. Because you only make $40,000 a year. It's unacceptable. You take that average guy who's making 20 bucks an hour. You take his wage for 40 hours a week, and that gives you 40 k a year. Now, let's add to that another... 40, another 40 hours a week, this time making 20 times 1.5. So that would be $30 an hour. So you take that 40K plus $30 an hour times 2,000. $30 an hour times 2,000 will give you $60,000 a year. You add those two together, 40,000 plus 60,000, you're making $100,000 a year. $100,000 a year just by working more overtime. So if you actually change your mindset, we don't even look at jobs and what they're offering you hourly based on you know the, the regular hourly rate of 15, 20, 30 dollars an hour. If you look at it based on this formula of calculating how much overtime you can make by, by making by working 80 hours a week, you will see that there is so much free money that is available for those that are just willing to work. Like Instead of looking at a job as making $20 an hour, you look at it as making $100,000 a year. That will change your mindset and how much you can actually like make and earn and, and your standards of living and, and how much money you think is accessible to you. I'll give an example of this in my life. So as you guys know, before I went to go become a physician, I was a paramedic, hence the MD medic. Ha! <laughs> you guys get it? Yeah. MD medic. I was a paramedic, right? And so paramedics, we get paid hourly. And mind you, our pay scale is a little bit different, and oftentimes they offer you bonuses for picking up extra shifts. But the concept is, is kind of the same. For me, it was easy to make six figures. For pretty much all of the time I spent working as a paramedic, I cleared six figures easily, well into six figures, simply because I worked a crap ton, right? So as a medic, I worked 24-hour shifts. And these added up like crazy. If I work, you know, four 24 hour shifts a week, I was, you know, right there sitting at 96 hours. And, you know, that is that, uh, <coughs> sitting at 96 hours is a ton of overtime. As I said, other places that I work even gave you an incentive bonus, an extra $6, an extra $10 an hour on top of your time and a half because the staffing shortage was that bad. So, I mean, there's so much money out here to be made. The cool thing about working this much is if you're used to living at, you know, the $40,000 a year mark, if you're used to living at, and your standard of living is set based on what you normally used to make by working 40 hours a week, then it should not be too hard to get your mindset into living at the same standard of living and saving all the rest so that you can take all that capital and put it into other things. Now, the hard part about this, well, Hard if you're a loser. The hard part for some losers about this is it means that they'll have less free time. It means that they won't, you know, be able to sit and watch TV every night. It means that they may not be able to come home and play video games and watch football. And they may be complain, oh my gosh, I don't get to do all these things. I don't get to, to watch as many video, to play as many video games. I don't get to watch as much TV. I don't get to jerk off as much because I'm spending so much time working. Ha! <laughs> Gay! Yeah, if that's your mindset, that's who you are, bro. Like, 
You either choose to make money or be a loser. We talked about before in a previous episode that you can't be average. And if you're choosing to settle for average just like that, I mean, if you're choosing to stay broke and to settle for average, to settle for forty for $40,000 a year, 40 hours a week, simply because you don't feel like it, simply because you just want to stay home and watch TV, that's an L on you. So I think I beat that horse. Second way to make money, second way to increase your revenue streams, a second way that anybody else can gain an extra stream of income is by learning how to trade stocks. Now, this can make you an actual millionaire and billionaire. You look at people like Warren Buffett, for example. He is one of the wealthiest men in the world, worth hundreds of billions of dollars. That's right. Hundreds of billions with the B. This guy learned how to make the stock market work for him. He was a little country dude from Nebraska that learned simply how to trade stocks. Made it work. Now he's a billionaire. There's so much potential with learning how to trade stocks. I'm going to kind of break down this um, this idea of trading stocks on how it works for you. So literally all trading stocks is is buying a portion of a business waiting for it to gain value and selling it for a higher price than what you bought it. It's really that simple. Now, to break it down even further, there are some companies that are public and some companies that are private. So when you hear of a company that's listed as public sector, basically what that means is they take their company and put it on the stock market where you can buy shares of it. A private sector company is you know, probably the mom and pop store down the road, the restaurant that you see that's simply owned and funded by a single person or a single family. All of the expenses to take care of this business is all raised by the owners of the business. Everything that they have to do to operate it is completely funded by a single um, proprietor, by a single business owner and operator. However, going public with your company, or in other words, listing it on the stock exchange, is a great way for companies to gain the capital or gain the money to grow the company. So essentially... Say I have a company. This is called Company A, right? Say I have a company. My company has a valuation of a million dollars, right? That's like the earning potential of the company. That's how much I put into it. It's valued at a million dollars. I want to now expand the company, but I need more money to put into the company in order to expand it. So because I don't have the capital, if, if I were that theoretical business owner, because, you know, I'm being the medic. I'm, I'm going to be as rich as I want to be. But let's just say as a theoretical owner of company A who does not have the capital to expand the business, one thing that he can do is he can take his company and list it and make it public on the stock exchange. So basically what he would do is say he might decide that he wants to take his million dollar company. He wants to divide it up into... Let's say let's make it a nice, easy number. Say he wants to divide it up into 100,000 shares, right? Divide the company into 100,000 individual units of ownership. Each one of these shares would be worth about $10. Million dollar company divided by 100,000, $10 per share. So he would go and he would go and sell that on the stock exchange. And so People who want to own parts of the company and invest into this company, who they believe in the company, they believe in the company motto, they believe in the business model, they'll go and buy bunches of shares in the company. So say I had said and I decided that I like this company. I went and I bought 100 shares, $110 shares of this company. I spent $1,000 and invested it in the company A. I bought 100 shares of company A. Because I believe in this company. By me buying the shares, I'm giving $1,000 to company A for him to put back into the business and grow the business with. Meanwhile, as the business gains value or loses value, the, the cost and the price of, of my stocks and my shares that I bought in this company increase or decrease. So say this company was a startup and it became as successful as Apple. And now this $1 million company became a $10 billion company, right? Crazy astronomical gains. I initially bought the 100 shares of this company, spent $1,000, bought 100 shares. And now, because this company has done so great, 
each one of those shares is now worth ten thousand dollars and this this kind of gain actually happens people like this really happens so now i have a hundred shares of a ten thousand dollar stock right i made a million dollars right there with an initial investment of a thousand dollars so at this point when it's increased value and now I have a portfolio that's worth a million dollars, I will go and, share and sell these same shares to somebody else out on the stock market. They'll go and buy them because they also see value in this company and they want to get into the growing trend. Meanwhile, I just change my stocks for cash, right? It's a really awesome way to make money. A lot of people make fantastic money by doing this. The flip side is that I might buy these shares. I might spend my $1,000 up front. The company owners, they may make really poor decisions. They may decide to spend all the proceeds coming in on blowing hookers and embezzle money and all things like that. And all of a sudden, the, the value of the company devalues. They go bankrupt. And now each one of my stocks is now worth 50 cents. So now I have 100 sh shares of 50 cent stocks. So my portfolio that I put $1,000 into is now devalued at $50, and I've lost $950. That is also a possibility. So there's risk and there's benefit to the stock market. But here's something that Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, fantastic book. This guy's a billionaire. This guy's made tons of money by simply learning how money works and how cash flows. In his book, he said that there are some investments that are inherently risky and some investments that are inherently not as risky. However, what you can do to make all investments not as risky is by becoming a smarter investor. In other words, the smarter an investor is, the more an investor understands an investment and how the investment works, the better he can be at investing and the less his risk is going to be. <laughs> Definitely deserves an air horn. I'm giving you guys some sauce. So, you know, when you understand how the market works, it becomes a lot easier to use it to make money, to use the market to your advantage. So I actually, when, when I first started investing into the stock market, I spent an entire year, almost about 10 months, just reading, just watching videos, understanding and learning as much as I can on how to invest. There's so much free education out here. Once again, there is absolutely no reason for an able-bodied man to be broke. As much free education that there is out there, if you are broke, it is completely your fault. <laughs> so I spent 10 months learning on how the stock market works before I even touched it, before I even created a Robinhood account, a TD Ameritrade account, before I even set up a platform to, inv to invest in, in stocks and trade them, I wanted to make sure that I learned as much as I could. And that definitely helped me to make some pretty good gains. For example, I'm going to give you guys some sauce. Look at Rumble. Rumble is a very awesome platform for free speech, right? It, it's pretty much going to be the replacement for YouTube. Once a whole bunch of people like me and Andrew Tate and other people who like to speak freely all get canceled for basically saying the things that everyone else is thinking, but no one has the balls to say. So Rumble is a free speech platform that will not cancel people. That will not deplatform people for having a, a narrative and a thought process that's against the matrix. And as people have, are getting canceled on some of these mainstream platforms, they're moving over to Rumble. And because of this, Rumble's stock has gone up. The price of the stock, the, the value of the company has soared. And it's at the point, guys, I'm gonna give you some sauce. I've been making like two to three hundred dollars a day. I will repeat that. I've been making about two to three hundred dollars a day <coughs> off of my investments in Rumble. I saw that it was a trend. I saw that, you know, hey, people are moving over there. The value might increase. So I decided to throw some money at it. I got my money pregnant with more money so that it makes more money for me. Right. Robert Kiyosaki also said the difference between the rich and the poor in terms of mindset, is the rich by assets. An asset is simply something that puts money back into your pocket. A liability is what the poor people buy. A liability is something that takes money away from you. So people who are going to make money and people who do have money look for things that are going to be assets. Like Rumble, something that I bought. By the way, this is not financial advice. It's just giving you examples of what I do. Like Rumble, for example, I bought a bunch of shares of it. I saw that it was increasing. I rode the trend, and I'm still making money from it.
It's great. Also, I heard through the grapevine that Elon Musk may or may not be considering buying Rumble, and everything that Elon Musk touches goes to gold. So, once again, not financial advice, wink, wink, but I might have been giving you, know, you guys a little bit of sauce there. So, <coughs> do with it what you like. But yes, stock market investments is a fantastic way to make a whole bunch of you know, passive income. You, there's different ways of doing it. You can you can invest in companies that are smaller and upstart. These companies are going to be a lot more vi- volatile, which basically means the prices will go up and down a whole lot very quickly. You have to monitor it closely, but they have the propensity to change greatly. So you can make a lot of money and lose a lot of money really quickly in these companies. But if you know what you're doing, you can make money just by day trading, like looking at the trends, seeing when it's going to go up, buying it and selling it at the top, getting out, you know, increase your money five, 10 percent every single day. A lot of people do that. A lot of people make a lot of money. There's also long term investing, which is where you take a more stable company that, you know, is going to have some good, solid growth over a long period of time. You buy shares in that company. You continue like every paycheck. You deposit a certain amount of your paycheck into your uh, brokerage account and buy more shares of this. And you just wait as the value increases. You know, this might have slower gains, but say you might put 10000 into it. And then in five years from now, you go and you look at it, you have $40,000. This is one way you can make money, make money for you and a little bit less risky by playing the long term game. Once again, I encourage you all to just read up and choose what style works best for you, right? Um, another thing that I want you to know about stock market investing is to understand the different ways that things can gain value and lose value, right? Some things might increase value quickly or drop value quickly based on emotion. For example, Elon Musk, whenever he endorses a stock on Twitter or says, I'm going to buy it, tons of people go and run out and buy it because they know that everything that Elon Musk touches turns to gold. And their emotional reaction causes the stock price to shoot up. But because it's just an emotional reaction, the stock price comes back down and levels itself out. Because it's not a true reflection of the value of the company, but more people acting out of emotion. Simple supply and demand. More people buy up the stock. The less of it's out there, the more the value is. Also, if Elon Musk says, I don't like something, right? Then, and he sells a bunch of shares. Everyone else wants to do the same thing. They dump all of their stocks. The the cost of the the stock drops tremendously off of emotion. But once again, the inherent value of the company hasn't changed. It's just emotion and the price will level itself back out. But you also have to learn how to recognize those trends. For example, you don't go and buy something just because of emotion and everybody else is hopping on board unless you realize that it's an emotion and understand when to get out of it so you can make money off of people's emotion. Also, if there's a stock that you know is a very solid stock and something emotional happens or people get scared and they sell a bunch of it and the price dips down, you use that opportunity and you buy that stock because you know the cost is going to go back up and you know that that stock is worth a whole lot more than what the current price is reflecting. So that's enough about the stock market. Let's go to the third way that you can create another income stream, and that is off of trading cryptocurrency. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard about cryptocurrency, especially in the past three years. You know, there's been billionaires and millionaires made off of buying and selling cryptocurrency. You know, cryptocurrency are things like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, all kinds of things, right? It's essentially a new money system. It's very similar to stock market trading in terms of basically you want to buy when it's low, sell when it's high, make a profit. But the difference between selling and buying uh, crypto and stocks is stocks are a portion of businesses. Crypto is an actual form of currency. It's a form of money. It's it's a digitalized form of currency that's made by uh, supercomputers who basically use a ton of energy to do Bitcoin mining or create Bitcoins on the blockchain, which is a massive internet program. It's very complex on how this works, but I'll just give you the basics because all of these supercomputers that do this mining process have to use a ton of energy. Cryptocurrency, unlike the US dollar, is actually tied to something valuable, which is energy. So cryptocurrency actually has an inherent value. Our money, the paper US dollars, literally only has values because the government says that it does. That's it. 
It literally only has value because the government says that it does. Cryptocurrency, however, is tied to energy because it takes a lot of energy to create it, so therefore it has an inherent value, if that makes sense. I know that's really confusing, but that's the gist of crypto. Now, crypto, because it's a new currency, it is very volatile to emotions. It can make massive swings upward and downward in a single day. But with lots of volatility, makes lots of opportunity to make money. Another benefit about trading crypto is whereas the stock market is only open Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., plus or minus a couple hours for after hours and, and pre-market trading, cryptocurrency, the markets are moving 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you could literally wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning and say, I want to make some money. Pull out your phone, go to the Robinhood app or whatever platform you're using to trade stocks and crypto. Watch the market. If you can follow the trends and, and, and predict the pattern which it's going to go, you can make some money right there. You can see it's going up. You're going to make a 2% run. You buy into it. You come out at the end. You made some money. Crypto has a lot of money to be made. A lot of people think that crypto is, is dead, that the big money to be made in crypto is already gone, and it's just little small surges of emotion that you can make money off of. However, I still think that some of the good days and good gains for crypto are still out there. You all might have heard about the huge crypto explosion in 2021, right? I am still kicking myself to this day on it. I had in 2019 or 2020, I bought 10,000 in Dogecoin. And at this time, Dogecoin was only valued at, you know, 0 0.25 um, cents per coin. I went because it was a new coin. I was like, it might do something. I just went and bought 10,000 and I held on to it for a couple of years. And here comes 2021. I was going through kind of a rough time in my life right now at that point, And I needed some extra money. So Crypto hadn't done anything. The Dogecoin hadn't done anything. It hadn't moved in the two years since I had been holding it. So I decided I wanted to sell it. And the very next day, Dogecoin surged from 0 0.25 cents per share all the way up to about 80 almost cents per share. That is an astronomical increase from a fraction from a quarter of a cent to 80 cents. That's like a 320x gain. I could have made hundreds of thousands of dollars off of that move because I, but I sold like a day early. So still kicking myself for that, but I'm going to make it up in other ways. But that is an example of the drastic ways that cryptocurrency can make you money. Once again, it all comes on like doing your research and understanding how it works because the smarter you are, the less risk you take. Once again, I will say that again. That is gold right there. That's worth an air horn. The smarter you are, the less risk you take in investing. All right. Number four, car flipping, right? This is another way where you can create income streams. I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but it, it's a legitimate way. And I know people that have made some pretty good money doing this. So the way car flipping works, particularly outside of tax season, is you can find cars, that have about 100,000 used cars that have about 100,000 miles on them sold in about the $2,000 range. When it's not tax season, it's you can find those cars everywhere. You can find a car that's got, you know, decently low miles for $2,000 or less on Facebook Marketplace, on Craigslist, on the side of the road. And the reason why these prices are so low is because most people, because they're broke and they're losers, and they don't use their money wisely. They don't have really any money on hand to actually make a large purchase outside of tax season. So people who are trying to sell a car understand that. And so they know that they can't charge a ridiculous amount when it's not tax season. So that's why they'll let these good cars go for like, you know, $2,000 or less. When it's not tax season, you go and you buy up as many of those as you can. Oh, but I don't have any money. You would have money if you did the things that I said before. You take some of these other steps, rack up the cash, rack up the capital, and you have a big old pile of it to use whenever you see opportunities come by to make money. 
So if you buy all of these like decent cars, about a hundred thousand mile range, less if you can get it for about two thousand dollars, you clean them up. When it comes tax time, and you have all these, you know, taxis and millionaires, everyone who gets their, you know, little three thousand dollar, four thousand dollar, five thousand dollar tax check, they all think that they're rich. They all want to go and buy stuff and act stupid. All these cars that you bought, put them on Facebook Marketplace at that point. Put them on the side of the road, charge $4,000 for them, and you can get it just like that because everybody's got a little money in their pocket, right? You can go and you can flip these cars and you can easily make 50 to 100% returns. The cool thing about car flipping is that if you can find a good enough deal, you don't even have to wait until tax season in order to make a good game. Facebook Marketplace, as I said, makes this, makes this a lot easier. You can search for good deals on Facebook Marketplace, see cars that are undervalued. Like if you see a car that's got 100,000 miles on it or less, and it's like 1,000, 1,500, jump on it. Or if you see a deal where the car might be a little bit you know, over that price range, but you think that you can haggle the price down because the seller is desperate, jump on it. Get it. The lower you can buy the car for, the higher your profit margin can be, and then you could even charge lower prices and still make money outside of tax season. <coughs> That's some sauce for you. Now, another thing about buying these used cars is if you look outside of tax season, as I said, for the most part, most people only have a significant amount of money in the bank saved up whenever it's tax season because they're uh, – You're a loser. That's who they are. Because most people are dumb, they spend their money irreverently. They don't look forward past you know next five minutes and think about saving or investing. They live for the moment. You can take advantage of that. This is how. A lot of people will buy a bunch of stuff. They'll be cash-strapped throughout the year when it's far away from tax season, and they'll need to sell cars, need to get rid of stuff because they're desperate. They need cash. They need it bad, and so they're willing to let go of perfectly good things like cars, for a lower price than what they would normally ask for because they need to cash that bad. Listen, people, I am telling you to exploit that. Yes, I am telling you to exploit other people's desperation. <laughs> I know that makes me sound bad, but listen, if people are going to be stupid. They're going to be stupid whether or not you're doing the right thing or not. So you might as well make, make money off of other people's stupidity. I don't think that that's immoral at all. So... You're going to have these people who are willing to let go of these cars that are pretty good condition because they are irresponsible and they need the cash and they're strapped. You haggle them down to the bone and you get that car for a steal. And even outside of tax season, you can switch that, flip it over, clean it up, and you can sell it for a profit. Money. Easy money. If you've got a little bit of capital in your pocket, you can just like that. So another way that you can generate passive income streams. Anybody can do it, especially if you've employed the other things and have built up a little bit of capital, is by venture capitalism. So venture capitalism is defined as a direct investment into an upstart business in exchange for a guaranteed profit percentage in perpetuity. Let me break that down for you. So what a venture capitalist does is he looks for small businesses, people that are about to start up a business that seem like they have promise, they have a good business model, they have a good product. And you know, if a person is perspicacious enough, if they pay attention, if they are able to analyze and see things for what they really are, they can spot people who have good ideas, who have solid foundation and say, this, this person is going to go somewhere with that business. And oftentimes these upstarts, they don't have a bunch of cash. And they don't have the infrastructure yet to even take their business public because it's so small. So what a venture capitalist will do is he'll come up to them and he'll be like, listen, I think your current, the current value of your company and all the assets of your business, I, it's probably worth $40,000. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you $10,000 to pour into your business, $10,000 to help you upstart your business. I'm going to go ahead and buy you that food truck. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, buy you a whole bunch of new photography equipment. Just to give you examples. I'm going to give you X amount of money that's approximately 25% of the cost of your business or maybe even more. I want you to get started. I want your success. And what I want in exchange is going forward as you grow, as you get bigger, I want guaranteed 25% of the profits. 
So this is how you can take things that are small and, and it, you, like, or, or big. Like if you have millions of dollars, you can, you know, fund larger corporations, larger companies. But, you know, if you work hard, you save your money, you're smart, you work extra hours, you invest your money in different ways, stock market, flipping cars, crypto, all this kind of stuff, you should have a little bit of money laying around to be able to take advantage of, you know, situations like this when you see them and opportunities that come about. So say there's a guy who wants to create a food truck or someone who has a landscaping company they want to make or someone wants to create a photography studio or a little restaurant or maybe even an athlete like an MMA fighter or a boxer you know, who needs a sponsorship to pay for their training or whatever. All these different people who you know that they're, they show promise, they, they, you know that they're going to go forward and be things in the future. What you can do is basically say, hey, listen, I'm going to invest $10,000 into your business, $10,000 into your training ten thousand dollars into your equipment i see that you're going to go places i see you're going to do big things you have a great business model you have a quality product you're great at marketing you have the personality of a winner you don't give up easily you're hungry you're ambitious i believe in you and i believe in your business and so you invest in it and it's a win-win for both they get the capital they needed to get started up started up they become successful they do what they love they create a successful business for themselves and you get your guaranteed cut moving forward, sitting back, chilling. That is venture capitalism. Now, this can be a gamble because if you, you know, invest in some lazy bum who, uh, you know, says that he has some great idea and thinks he's going to make a million dollars, but the first time he hits any kind of difficulty or roadblock, he gives up, and you have, uh, you've lost your money, and in that point, you've. Uh, taking a nail so you don't want that you have to be perspicacious look at the person look at the business model look at the product that they're offering and b try to see if you can capitalize on it if the model works best that you think it can be something you can make money off of and another thing that you have to do and i mean you absolutely have to do to protect your butt is get legal documentation so what you do is you write up a contract that basically says this is what you want. I am going to give you X amount of money and I want X amount of, of profit going forward in the future. And most people usually do about 10 to 25%. That's a generally a fair amount that most you know business owners are willing to part with in order for you to help them out. So you say in the document, hey, I'm going to give you X amount of money to help you get started. X amount of resources, I'm going to do this. And in return, you're going to give me X percentage of the profits from your business going forward in perpetuity, no matter how big the business grows, right? And then what you'll do is you'll take that document, you'll get it read over by a lawyer um, or and, and your accountant too. You'll take it to a notary and you guys will both sign it in front of the notary. Make sure you also include in this document actual damages and consequence to be done if the contract is breached. That way you can protect yourself. By venture capitalism, listen, imagine this. You're back in the 1970s or 80s, whenever it was that Microsoft was getting going. You're out and you see that there's a bunch of college kids, college dropouts, who are working out in a shed, creating this computer. They're broke and they say, hey, listen, we have this great idea. We want to call it Microsoft, this, this computer company. We just need a couple thousand dollars to get it going. Will you help us? And if you saw the promise in those people, you gave them just a few thousand dollars. You signed a contract and you said, you know what? I just want 25% of profits going forward. Microsoft, with your investment, takes off, becomes a multi-billion dollar company, and you have a 25% cut, cut of it just for your initial few thousand dollars investment. That right there is the gold of venture capitalism. <coughs> so, number six. A way to increase your income stream, a way to gain another revenue stream of money coming in is to use social media to your advantage. Social media is the wave of today. As you guys see, this is what I'm doing right here, right? I'm using social media to make money. Social media is a tool that is used to monetize attention. Attention is money. And the world revolves around attention. Everyone posts stuff on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on 
all these different platforms to get attention. Why not make money off of attention? That's the cool thing about social media is that you can make money off of people's attention. So some of the largest platforms, Rumble, as I was talking about, YouTube, TikTok, Spotify, all of these things can be monetized to make you money. For example, YouTube, when you've reached a certain amount of followers and had enough watch time, you can create an AdSense account. So basically you see those ads that are in the beginning of a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, essentially, whenever people click on the videos, watch the YouTube videos, and watch the ads, the content creators are getting paid for them. And there's people that become millionaires off of it. You know, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, they're worth multi-millions of dollars simply off of YouTube AdSense. Um, so, I mean, like, you look at Anchor and Spotify, the Spotify platform, there's people that make, you know, thousands of dollars a week off of that. You know, you, you get money for every listen that is given from your podcast that you put on Spotify, which is why I have it on Spotify. And then TikTok has a new partnership program where basically you can get paid per view um, on your TikTok profile, and they also use that for advertising. There's so much money to be made out here. And the real secret to making money on social media is quality content plus consistency plus visibility will eventually turn into profit. I'm going to say that again. Quality content plus consistency plus visibility is going to equal profit. Now, let's break that down. Quality content. Like you have to create stuff that adds value to people that people want to watch. Because in this world, there's tons and tons of mindless entertainment and stupid videos of people singing and dancing to some stupid songs or doing uh, voiceovers and all that stuff. And I'm telling you. <laughs> Gay! Yeah, that's what all that stuff is. But you can stand out by creating quality content. Like what I have. Stuff that makes you stronger, richer, and better with the ladies, right? Increases your professional excellence. Teaches you things that are great for you to know. That's why I have a platform to add value to you guys because I create quality content. I therefore can make a profit off of that by helping you guys. And what's cool is you guys aren't paying anything. You guys are getting all of this education, all of this resource, all this material for free. And people like me who want to find a way to monetize the information that we have to share can make money off of it. So social media is a great platform. The consistency part of it, you know, it takes a lot of work to build a platform. There's so much competition out here, which is why you have to have quality content, but you be consistent. You have to post frequently on your Instagram, on your Twitter, on your TikTok, on your Facebook, structure it all to get people's attention and then lead them back to your main monetization point, which for me would be YouTube and visibility. Once again, it goes into advertising and different things. But another cool thing that TikTok has just recently released is they have a promotion feature where you can create a video and then actually pay to promote it and you know set how many people you want the video to get seen by and help to promote your your content to get it vis visible. Only thing is that you know TikTok is very woke and they'll cancel you for you know even saying a man's a man, a woman's a woman, a man should take pride in himself, he should make money, he should get ripped, he should get rich, and he can have all the women that he wants. The video that I made about how a man should not be average and how to get better. You know, I spoke harshly, but I spoke honestly, and I know that I help some men out there to become better men, and it's much needed. Overall, is a positive message on how anyone can be better by doing simple things because the average person is a loser, so being above average is that much easier, and that's how you get the attention from the ladies you want. It was a positive message, but TikTok banned that video. I did a promo video, the same one that's on my Instagram and on my Twitter, a promo video for the YouTube, the, the full-length YouTube video. I put that on TikTok. It got shut down because it said it violates community guidelines. So TikTok is kind of iffy. But honestly, as I said, if you can create quality content, give consistency, create visibility, you can make a profit. If you can just find a, a niche, find a spot where you fit in, you can make passive consistent money off of social media. Um, so another thing that is a pretty cool trend that I've seen people doing, you guys have seen those fireplace videos, right? It's just like kind of an ambient crackling fireplace on YouTube, just 10 hours of footage. Um, or like people will take um, individual songs from like, I I've seen them do like worship services where they have like a, a dope um, 
worship set at the beginning of the service, and they'll take the individual songs out of that and repost them on YouTube for everybody to see. Or even, you know, as I said, those those ambient fireplace that are like, you know, 10 hours worth of fireplace scene and crackling um, that you'll see on YouTube or even, you know, the sound of the rain for, for 10 hours. I'm telling you, people are making money off those. Look how many views are on those videos. Some of these have millions of views. And, you know, generally the way YouTube works is that you get paid $17 per thousand views. So someone who has like a million views on their channel or a million views on a video, that person's making 17 grand from a simple rain or fireplace video. <coughs> yeah. And it could stay up for years. And as people continue to watch it, that person continues to get paid. There's so much money out here, guys. I'm telling you, there's no reason to be broke. Absolutely no reason to be broke. So, now, here's the big daddy, the big dog. The ultimate way to make money. The ultimate stream of income. The ultimate asset that a person can have is real estate. Yes, real estate. In my opinion, and in the opinion of most people who know anything about finances in the market, the best and most stable investment and income stream that a person can have is in real estate. This is the ultimate destination for accumulated wealth from the other streams of income. Real estate is actually so stable. Real estate is so profitable and so predictably successful that if you were to go to the bank and ask the bank for a loan to go and buy stocks in the stock market and hope to get a profit off of it, you know what they're going to do? You go and ask them that. You know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to turn you down. They're going to say no. But if you go to the bank and ask them for a loan to buy an investment real estate, you're going to get it because the bank understands that there is a very low risk and high pro of loss and a high probability of success and them getting their money back with interest as, as well as you making money off of real estate. That is how stable it is. If you actually look at it, 90% of millionaires and billionaires in the world own real estate investments, 90%. So if that's what the rich are doing, that's something that we should be doing too. Check this out. Over the past 70 years, stock prices have gone up and down randomly with volatile fluctuation. They've changed due to wars. They've changed due to, mar due to economies and market conditions. They've changed due to government and all that kind of stuff. But guess what? Rent prices have always been on the incline. <coughs> Rent prices have never had a period where they've gone downwards. Rent is one way. And one thing that catches up and actually outpaces the rate of inflation. So that is how you can protect your money. Real estate is such a solid investment. I mean absolute solid investment. You can buy a single house. You can split it into apartments. You can take a, a big 2,000 square foot house. You can split it in four, into four different studio apartments. You can charge 500 bucks a month. And you're making $2,000 a passive income right there. Let's just say, for example, you were able to buy a bunch of properties that you were able to split up out in many different ways to the point where you have 100 doors, 100 different individual living units, and you're able to collect an average of $800 a month from each of these units. That is $80,000 a month of passive income. $80,000 a month of income coming in without you having to clock in a single hour on the clock. This is bomb. No matter what, people are always going to need a place to live. Markets go up, markets go down, companies crash, companies succeed, but no matter what, people are always going to need a place to live. So real estate is always going to be gold. Now, a lot of you may say, oh, I don't have a whole lot of money to buy real estate. Well, if you've been doing the other six, you should have some money. But there's ways to even get around that. There's two schools of thought when it comes to buying real estate. You know, the first school of thought is to have the complete amount of capital up front to purchase a house or property with cash and then to do the necessary work on the house to make it livable and able to be rented out. So the benefit to this is you don't have any mortgage payment you have to pay every month. You don't have to owe anything on the house. You bought the house in cash and now everything that you're making from renting it out is now profit immediately. Now, 
The downside is you have to have a whole lot of capital up front for that. You have to have saved a bunch of money. The other school of thought is to use the bank's loaning power to leverage the power of your capital. What that means, what leveraging money means, is that you put down less capital up front and you have the bank finance the rest. For example, if you're going to get a loan for $100,000 to buy a house, the bank might request that you put down 10% of the loan value. So to show that you're serious, to show that you're you know serious about paying this loan back to the bank, that you're serious about being responsible with money, the, to show that you can even handle that amount of money, the bank might say, okay, we'll give you $100,000 to buy a house, but we want you to give us $10,000 down just to show us that you're serious about saving and managing money. So they might ask you for 10% down, so that $100,000 would be $10,000. So in other words, for $10,000 of your money, you are getting $100,000 of the bank's money to go and buy houses with. So for your $10,000 down, you're getting $100,000 from the bank. You go and you buy a house, you fix it up, you get it rented out. Now, you will have to pay a monthly mortgage payment. You will have to pay monthly payments on that loan, but if as long as you're charging more in rent than you're charging in your monthly payments, you're still making a net profit. So in other words, for $10,000, you're getting $100,000 worth of assets. And even better is your debts other people are paying for it. That is the sauce. You get good debt. Stupid debt is the kind where you go and you run up credit cards on stupid things that don't pay you. You buy liabilities. But you use debt to buy assets, and this debt isn't even paid for by you. It's paid for by somebody else. So for $10,000, you get $100,000 worth of asset. Now, let's say you have $100,000 from doing all the other income stream of things that I told you about. You want to go buy a house. You can either buy a house in cash, one house for $100,000, or you can use $100,000, 10x that, take out 10 different loans for $100,000 with 10% down, and 10x your income. That is the sauce. Now, I hope that that helps you guys. I hope that teaches you guys how to make some money, how to be stronger, how to live better. That's the way of the NB Medic Podcast. I want you guys to follow us, like us, subscribe to us on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Spotify, at the NB Medic Podcast. Come on, guys. Make some money. NB Medic out.